overcoming adversity Doing it at all costs Making wins are all lost Yeah, the world is all lost All lost, yeah Ain't no turning back We headed straight for the stars, yeah Oh yeah We overcoming adversity Doing it at all costs Making wins are all lost Yeah, the world is all lost All lost, yeah Ain't no turning back We headed straight for the stars, yeah Oh yeah Welcome to the Overcoming Adversity Podcast, where it's all about a transformation of growth and a resilient mindset. Before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm your host, Michael Allison. Today, we have the principal partner for the insurance company, Prominent Insurance. He grew up in the projects of New York City. As a paraplegic, he navigates life through a wheelchair, confronting limitations and other um, experiences that he felt in his life. Despite facing some of these uh, significant challenges, uh, Jason Rodriguez continues to demonstrate resilience and a determination in the face of adversity. Let's welcome to the show, my friend, Mr. Jason Rodriguez. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you for clapping for me. You know, let me clap for you. <laughs> <laughs> we got yes, to give you what's due to you, bro. <laughs> That's right, brother. Uh, thank you. I want to thank you, my friend, you know, Mr. Michael Allison, for allowing me on your platform. Looking forward to our engaging conversation today. Let's go, Abs- brother. I'm all absolutely, forward. man. Um, you know, uh, Ever since we met and we spoke uh, about two, three years ago, we met, man, and um, you've always been like super encouraging, super uh, em- empowering in regards to like how you speak and what you talk about, bro. And I always thought that you spoke at a, su- a supremely high level in regards to how you communicate. And I said, um, I really admired that about him. And then uh, once I saw like uh, other actions that you've been taking, um, in different various communities and stuff like that and how you're trying to help people. I said, um, I wanted to bring this guy on the show, man, but I, I feel like you bring so much value in regards to what you can share and there's so much opportunities that's out there that people just may not know about, man. So thank you for being here, bro. Oh, man, thank you for having me. Thank you for them kind words as well, man. Uh, and that's that's humble. I appreciate you for that. Uh, you Thanks, know, man. Sure. So, uh, hey, man, I know that... Uh, I mentioned quite a few of these things that you've faced and, and been through in your life, bro. So if you can, man, can you tell us a little bit how you got to be so successful in your career now um, that you're doing for uh, the insurance industry? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, uh, adversity, like, you know, everything you got to do is fight through adversity. You know, uh, as you alluded to, grew up in the projects, and you know how that surrounding right. can be in that environment can be, you know ain't too much is conducive to not too much growth you know it stuns a lot of uh great people in that environment uh so you know navigating that environment had support systems as well family members mother you know held it down for a long period of time you know uh shout out to my mom <laughs> um and uh you know always been an entrepreneur you know i uh, see my brother my brother you know um was an entrepreneur as well he started selling clothing um, on retail on the street, you know, uh, as they would call bootleg back in the day. <laughs> you know, he was one of the first ones to start it in New York City. He's real big in New York City. So I always seen, uh, as we say, people, our, uh, my family make make money from the muscle. When they say from the muscle, it means you get out there every day and you get it. You know, you don't know uh, when your next meal was going to be there. You know, you just got to go out and shake the bushes. So I see my brother do that and a bunch of entrepreneurs in my community. So I wasn't the first generation of my family to be entrepreneurs. My brother, you know, that gave me that insight because it's really difficult uh, to talk to people. You know, a lot of people don't have that ability to talk to people. You know, they, they shy asking for the sale or asking for the uh, opportunity to do business with somebody. Those are hard conversations to have. Uh, It's not easy. And I've been doing it for uh, a long time. It's still not easy for me. So as an entrepreneur, I have multiple different businesses, you know, uh, um, you know, as we understand trial and error, right? You know, you see what works, you see what doesn't work. and, And, you know, I was at an age, which I'm still at an age. I'm not old yet. But I, you know, you, I was at an age when I was able to try different things to see what stuck and what didn't. Um, so I got into insurance, man, in the year 2010 because prior to that, I had a transportation company, and you know, um, as an entrepreneur, I had a transportation company, and insurance was one of my biggest line items. So looking at the business, I'm like, how can I get some of that back? And I had a relationship with the local. Uh, insurance agent who was writing my insurance at that particular time 
And, you know, we had a conversation, black owned minority insurance company as well. We had a conversation and he told me that insurance, I thought insurance, you needed some formal education, like an associate's degree or bachelor's, had to go to college. And, you know, college ain't for everybody. Um, so I was like, okay, you don't need that. It's just licensing. Oh, I can do that. I'm good. I'm very, you know, I can, I can study, you know, uh, discipline myself to pass tests. I did it before I got through high school. Um, so I took the test. I passed. Um, when I passed, I started, you know, learning the game, man. And I wish I would have knew about insurance from the beginning because it's the only thing mm -hmm. I did because it, 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 it has so many aspects to life, not just helping us, but helping others, you know, right. that's our missions as well. So, so not. <laughs> when you when you decided to get into uh, the insurance industry, you know, I want to go into like your upbringing because yourself was um, faced with uh, some uh, challenges that uh, came along the way. Did you think that um, anything that from your childhood would um, get in your way in regards to like stepping into this space? Um. You know, when I grew up, you know, like I said, in our environment, it's it's uh, it's not conducive to growth. You know, um, the majority of people when we come outside, you know, your first sign of success is usually the drug dealer. You know, somebody that's doing some negative things in your community. That's what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. um, the good guys is usually not in the projects. The people that got good careers is usually not in the projects. They get they, you know, they they uh, get what they get and they, you know, they move on to make a better life for themselves and their family, which is. Right. Uh, appreciate what you should do, you know. Um, so me growing up, you know, I had difficult times like most of us do, you know, uh, was led in the wrong direction like most of us are. Um, and I wasn't the intelligent one. Somebody tell you, hey, that 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 fire is hot. Don't touch it. Instead of listening to their advice, I would be the one trying to play with the fire <laughs> like many of us do. You know? um, so hard head you know and they say hard head gets us off behind so i experienced all of that you know and through my upbringing you know uh uh was involved in a lot which caused me to be in a wheelchair you know i got shot um in brooklyn new york which uh confined me to a wheelchair and uh ever since then you know um it, it changed my whole trajectory on life as well you know still didn't learn a lesson you know after that um still you know it's just the environment that we grow in is real difficult to pull on better experiences when they're not around you know I got so you. our ideal of success was everything around us and, and you know we enjoyed it at that particular time because we didn't know nothing else you know most communities uh if you live in brooklyn i grew up in a project that 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 becomes your whole atmosphere you know the world is not opened up to you as now the world is opened up because you can be in your project a uh, home and have your smartphone and be everywhere. You know, we didn't have smartphones. We didn't have ideas. We didn't have our mind expanding to different things and, and the heights that we can go if we just apply ourselves and do the things that's necessary for growth. So we didn't have that. And, and then having the right mentors is very important as well. So, you know, through my upbringing, made bad mistakes, made some good ones as well, because I'm still here. You know, through all adversity, I'm still here. So God has a plan for me, which I'm in the process of moving in that direction, you know, all, all the time. Yes, sir. If you can, man, um, let's uh, just jump back a little bit before we move a little bit forward in regards to a plethora of these questions that I wanted to jump into with you, man. But I think it's important for people to understand, like, where you're coming from. So can you talk a little bit about like your childhood upbringing? What was that like um, within that household? What was that like with um, your parents if they were there? And then, yeah, sure. um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then we, we could jump into, um, if you can, share a little bit about the story of um, how you ended up in a wheelchair, if you don't mind. Yeah, so um, growing up, just like most of my peers, you know, uh, our dads was not there. You know, uh, single family homes, most of my peers that I grew up with, most of them. I didn't, uh, I don't know how many of us had mother and dad in the home, which brings stability, which brings all types of uh, other dynamics to your household when you have two parents sure. in a home, especially two parents that's functioning on, 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 a, on a level of, you know, being civil. Um, so we didn't have that. You know, mom did the best that she, she, she can 
with the knowledge that she had, was able to raise us, you know, love my mom to death, you know, endured so much from us being bad boys, you know, and dad's <laughs> not being around. We, you know, we missed a few whippings, which we should have received. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, we missed a few whippings, but mama loved us with the few, you know, missed a few of those, which you should have received. I, I can attest. Um, and it was just, it was just that, you know, but in, even in that environment, it was a lot of love in the house, you know, uh, we didn't, I didn't see, uh, I, I, you know, we had fun. I enjoyed it the same, you know, I didn't, it didn't seem like that I missed out on anything. I didn't see something that I want. You know, I, I see my mother going to work every day. My mother was a hardworking woman as well, trying to hold two boys, you know, as, as, as Tupac said, you know, two bad kids on, her, on your own, you know, that dear mama, you know, that, that, that song could be, my mama heard that song. She cries all the time, you know? Mm. Um, so that was sort of like our path as well, you know? Um, just trying to survive in a neighborhood where, you know, you design to fail, you know, it's very difficult to, you know, to thrive in those environments, but we did. Many of us made it out. Many of us did, you know, many mm -hmm. of us, you know, is in jail dead. You know, I almost, almost uh, died. You know, I experienced jail as well. Um, not too many people going to get out of that, you know, and unfortunately I'm here today to tell my story, be a testament, show people, show people that was in my situation. There's other ways. This is what you can do. This is what you're able to achieve. If you desire to do it for yourself, you know, you got to desire change, you know, changing just going to come to you. You got to want it. So okay. growing up in that, in that environment projects, 28 buildings, so many different personalities, so many different lifestyles. And it was mainly 85% of the population, you know, that I bumped into lifestyles was not conducive to righteousness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to navigate that. You got to be strong enough to say, hey, I want something different. And many and many of those did. But I wasn't one of those. So, you know, fell victim to whatever, you know, society offered at that particular time, you know, and through that I got shot, you know, uh, uh, out there in the world trying to be, you know, a young kid trying to find his way with no dad. Very difficult to navigate life when you have no guidance, no mentors, somebody that birthed you into this world and they're not there giving you step by step, play by play on how to become an adult. You understand what I'm saying? How to become a young adult. You know, most people in my community don't make it past 18. You know, uh, 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 as you know, there's a, a famous line that I like to say about Jay-Z. He said, you know, life in our in our community, life expectancy is so low. We they, we making our wills at 18. Right. You know, so it's it's we can't we can't just negate that dynamic that exists. In those environments is very dangerous as we see, you know, as we see in any community, you know, you look at your, you know, I'm in, I'm in Philadelphia, 400 murders a year and, 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 and it's all black on black, you know, so it's very dangerous in these communities. And I was a victim of that as well, um, where I got shot at a 10 days of uh, 19 young boy, you know, I was still, still a baby, you know, still a baby trying to find my way, you know, trying to figure life out you know, with, with no outside mentorship to say, hey, you can get an insurance, you can be a computer engineer, you could be a minister, you could be a preacher, you could be a rocket scientist, you could be a president, you could be a professor, you know, giving you these options on saying, hey, here's a career path, choose which one works for you. Hey, hey go on college tours. We didn't get invited to college tours. We didn't get invited to high school tours. Nothing, you know, actually hit our community. So it was exempt from us, but that's no excuse, you know. Um, because there comes a time in my life that I desired that I needed something better for myself. And that was when, you know, my children was born. I had a, a baby and I needed something different. You know, I can't continue to, uh, perp uh, you know, continue that cycle of someone coming behind me with the same opportunities that I had, which was limited. So I wanted to be in a situation where I could provide a better environment for mine, you know, provide a better situation where they, I can start laying the foundation that they can build upon. So this is where we at today. And it's a, it's, a, it's a continued process because there's millions of good people like I am, you know, innocent young boys and girls that need help, you know, in these, in these areas that are designed to destroy them, mm. designed to put them in bad, you know, to keep them on the bottom. So, all right, let me unpack that a little bit. I got like four questions based off what you just said. So I want, I want to no talk worries. about the, uh, your emotions around that situation. 
So being someone that got shot and then um, you said you got arrested during that situation, I wanted to ask you, did you create or build up any types of like uh, resentment or did that fuel you to like change your life to do better sort of thing during that moment or it took a, another, another point in your life to like get to that particular point? Uh, no, that, that uh, I was just at that particular lab, I was just trying to stay alive. You know, that was the mm -hmm. only thing that was on my mind. And I was happy at that particular point that I was alive, you know, and I, I gotcha. didn't uh, actually. So that was the only thing on my mind at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And even after that, so I was, I was still relatively young. Uh, most of my peers were still in the street, you know, so we still perpetrated, even in the wheelchair, still perpetrated, you know, that type of mentality. Mm -hmm. um, but we all yearn for change, you know. It's not so, like we 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 desire to just do crime all our lives. We wanted something better. We wanted, you know, different opportunities. You know, that's why I'm in this seat today. If I wasn't in, you know, if I didn't want something better or a different opportunity, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So most of us yearn that, but the lack of uh, um, exposure to those limits our vision to be able to see opportunity when it's presented to us. That's what I wanted to ask you. So for yourself, like, bro, like I said, like, I uh, salute you based off what I know about you and see about you. So you, you, you've been through the storm, you've been through the fire at a young age, going through a lot of these things. So who is it or when was it that like something like clicked or turned, turned uh, like a light switch came on for you? For you to like see all these opportunities that was there for you because i i do agree with you like in certain neighborhoods certain projects certain cities um systems are set up in place where nobody's coming to do college tours no one is coming to show you job fairs no one is showing you that you could live a life of an entrepreneur you could drive these types of cars you could you know what i'm saying or these other opportunities are out there so who is it that or what was it you know what i mean that that reached out their hand to you and say, Jason, there's a better way. You could do this, you could do that. And just I brought enlighten you with a whole bunch of things in life. Yeah. So first, you know, um, me uh seeking after my daughter being born, you know, wanting a different change. And then my spiritual background, you know, I'm I'm a father of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that's where all of my uh uh knowledge and wisdom and understanding and ideas about life came from you know uh just the spiritual background wanting to wanting something different you know um for myself and my community you know and it just opened me up to what a man is what your role is in life in society what a woman is the importance of family and how the family structure is you know the root to found to building any strong foundation uh who I was as a person, the value that I had, the value that the you know our people have in society, and our relationship to God, you know. So with all of these uh, um, new information that I'm receiving about myself and how great I am and what I'm capable of doing, which I didn't have that ideology, like we just said, those we're not exposed to the, those things in our community. So when I got exposed to, hey, you're great. You can be whatever you desire to be as long as you do it. You know, you got to start to do right things, be righteous, and good things that come to you. And, you know, you start to say, hey, I've been doing this for so long, and, you know, it's been fun, but it always ends in grief or some type of uh, misfortune. How about I try something different <laughs> and see what this ends up? And then I started to try it. I said, wow, I started to be peaceful started to have quiet environments, started to be able to think, started to bump into people uh, in all walks of life and be able to develop relationships. And I said, hey, this is starting to, starting to work over here. Let's so continue that process. And as you continue it, you know, good things will come. You know, uh, uh, it's just it's just the problem. You know, we have to have patience, you know, uh, patience waiting for that thing that we desire to happen without us getting all flustered about it you know uh having patience so i'm still working that that process out and and it's been very rewarding for me because i have peace you know i'm not looking over my shoulder i right. uh, haven't wronged anybody i can keep you know nobody's looking for me to do me harm you know i have a lot of friendships 
you know, people smile when they see me. I smile when I see people. That's the relationship that, you know, I was able to, you know, start to develop because I changed my mindset and I started to think righteous instead of uh, negative. Or so I wanted to follow up on that. So how is it that you maintain a growth mindset in the face of challenges that you've uh, experienced in life? And like, we know that like, you know, obstacles are gonna continuously like come at you day in, day out. So how do you uh, maintain that and create that for yourself? It's not easy. I'm into, I was explaining that to my, you know, I was talking, you know, I always talk to myself too. That's, that's how I, I had developed that. <laughs> you know, my son, my son, uh, I, we got, we got it in the house. I say, if I want to speak to you, if you see me speaking to myself, I'm speaking to an intelligent person. You know what I mean? So, you know, hey. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm speaking to that genius again. So I'll be talking to myself. He said, dad, you speaking to that genius again? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, I, do, I do a lot of times get the best advice when I speak to myself. You know, is that other person in your mind that knows what you're supposed to be doing and how it's supposed to be done? But you be like, ah, let me, you know. So when I be speaking to myself a lot, I do that. You know, self reflection is very important. You know, um, and then just knowing, man, you know, you have to do it. You know, you have to uh, be the one to plant those seeds, so you know you can benefit from the shade. As the tree grows, you know, um, and it's not it's, it's, it's very difficult because the world today is designed in a way to keep people depressed mm -hmm. and keep them searching for more that they may not never achieved. And they're really never satisfied from our conversation. When you started to say, hey, I started to find my purpose. You can make you make millions of dollars and, you know, you, 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 you created millions of dollars. You know, you invested in millions, but that still didn't fulfill you. Right. But doing this and being able to help others is where real fulfillment for all of us is at, you know, but we are, you know, sometimes our vision gets clouded by money or shiny objects. And we think that's where happiness is. But happiness, true happiness is finding a passion. So that's what drives me every day as well, just finding my passion, because the, the society is is in a situation they want to have you depressed and they want to keep you in a, a, a place where you feel you're not worthy. That's why there's a lot of today, as you see, me mental health is at its all times high. You know, that that's at the, it seems like it's the forefront now because everybody's going through it. And you see prominent people actually saying, hey, I'm going through this. And, it, and it's happening a lot, lot with our, our athletes, our entertainers. You know, they starting to show you that, that, hey, this is not, all you see is the nice cars, the beautiful home. But man, I'm, I'm in hell. And I don't like it here, you know? Uh, and you'd be like, hey, I want that. And you'd be like, you don't really want this. You say you do, but I'm telling you. So how I deal with it, I always, I, I, you know, my children is my motivation. My teachings, what I believe is my motivation, which keeps me grounded and keeps me going. And, and, and of course, you know, um, just, just knowing that it's going to get better. Knowing that if I do what I say I was going, if I do the right thing, and you know, God is with the righteous. God is moving in the direction of the righteous. I'm going to be all right. But it's not. It's not easy uh, to be able to, you know, continue on a day to day basis um, and stay sane and, and fight. Because there's some days I don't feel like doing anything. You know, what I mean, there's some days I'm like I don't want to do anything today. Right. I'm, man, this thing is this thing is tough. But that's what it's intended to do, to push you, you know, adversity. You feel what I'm saying? Muscles get built during adversity. I remember Muhammad Ali saying, he said, how many pushes? He said, I don't start counting until I feel the pain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he never knows. Um, and it's just like, you know, and then I always, I'm like, I always think about this. Somebody always in a worse position that I may currently be in that would die to be in my shoes, right. you know, or would love to be in my shoes you know you got somebody that's doing 30 years in the pen right now he said hey i'd be getting I, i'd rather be homeless out than being in here and i could i i, I live in a train station just give me that opportunity you like you would take that i would take that you know yeah, yeah. People that would do these things because they're in a situation they're like wow well, i wish i was in your situation but you won't know that 
until you experience it yourself. 100%, bro. So, like, as you're telling me that story, man, I think about, like, uh, so this morning, every Monday morning, I, um, I meet with a group of uh, believers, and uh, we call ourselves Set Apart. And uh, we, we kind of, like, come raw and uncut every single morning and talk about business and life in regards to what I like is that it, it kind of, like, let us address, like, uh, like limits and beliefs and setbacks and things like that, that we may face in our personal life and our business. And we kind of like lay it out on the floor and it help us like create like breakthrough in regards to um, getting to whatever goals we're trying to achieve and just like leading this week on purpose. So this, this morning we're talking about um, adversity. Um, sure, sure enough, we're talking about adversity and the story of uh, David and Goliath came up and we were talking about him and like this dude feared nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fear nothing. You know what I'm saying? He 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 trusts and believed that whatever he was gonna do, he had the authority to do it, and he didn't let any setbacks or anything like that affect him. And that led me to thinking also like yesterday I had a phone call with a friend of mine, and he was a leader. Um, in a so I lead a a, a men's group um at my church too as well, and um, he was one of the leaders, and he was facing a situation, and it was just uh. It was like a revelation for me, though, bro, because, like, you know, I served in the military and, like, I see myself as the leader, um, leading men and things like that. So to see this occur, like, in my civilian life, and he would he needed help. And um, I picked up the phone and called him and tried to talk to him in that situation. I just think I just think about when you said that, like, you see these athletes, these superstars are dealing with some of these things, too. Like, they're not absent from adversity and, and needing help and calling for help. Well, I think a beautiful thing, though, what you said, though, is that um, people are much more vulnerable and transparent in regards to, like, getting help nowadays. Because they, you know, they're making it uh, easier for you to talk about it now. Right. I, prior years ago, they would, they would be like, he's weak, he's crazy, he's this, they're, they're, they're you know, demean you for having these issues, but they always existed. You know, <laughs> now... They're giving you a safe space to be able to express yourself and, yeah. you know, uh, offer help if they can. Only in a certain situations, only, you know, like only divine divinity can help certain situations. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, speaking of Muhammad Ali, I, I recall like he, he used to talk about like um, they sent off the soldiers and stuff like this to like fight wars or whatever. And um, I was thinking about like, I had another conversation with somebody and they were talking about like soldiers come back. Now, now they call it like PTSD, mental health and all these mm -hmm. other stuff. But back then he used to call it like shell shock and all that yeah. is what he said. Right. So what I thought was funny and interesting, man, as you said that when I got out of the military, though, it was uh, it was a company that I tried to work for. And instead of military friendly, I said some stuff around mental health. And um, before I knew it, I was no longer working for this company. So it's it's uh, it was so taboo to talk about mental health back then. Uh, yeah. That was like 10 years ago or something like that. But it's just so taboo now, man. So for yourself, man, um, how do you practice like self-advocacy or the importance of that for yourself as you navigate challenges, being someone that has a disability in, in um, this day and age that we live in? So I, you know, if anybody, if anybody could tell you or they encounter me, man, I, I uh, advocacy, man, I, um, I'm always optimistic, you know. I'm always thinking of better days. I know it's going to be better tomorrow, you know. No matter how dark it may be today, I know the sun is going to shine tomorrow. And I'm always settled on the best part, you know. Uh, uh, settled on the best part of, of things in life. I don't really worry about the you know, things I can't control too much, you know, um, but just, just, just handling, you know, understanding that, you know, uh, uh, tomorrow's going to come. And if it does, and if it doesn't come as, lean, as long as I did everything I needed to do today, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and I can't change my situation. So, you know, why um, cry about it, man, just live and experience the life that you have, no matter what your condition may be at this present moment. You know, you still got life. You you know, you know, God wanted you around for certain for some reason, unbeknownst 
to you at this particular moment. But if you move in your purpose, if you move in your purpose, you'll find your calling, you know? Uh, uh, and like my calling, I just, I, like, I really want to be a minister, you know, be a preacher. You know, that's really my calling. I just want to help people, you know, live better lives. But I have to be that example that I want to see. So, you know, um, and I and, and it's and it's good for me, too, because, like, I don't have no excuses. Being in a wheelchair paraplegic, man, I don't have no excuses. So I really don't allow people to really have excuses around me, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, unless they're in a worse situation, then you can have all the excuses <laughs> you want. But if you're nearly not, you know, if you're capable and, you know, uh, uh, I, I know you're capable, man, you know, it's, 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 it's only limited things you can tell me you can and cannot do. You know, I, I believe that if we put our minds to it, we can do whatever we desire to do if it's of good. You know, there's not too much that we cannot do. You know, uh, we was taught when God created the earth, you know, when God created us, he destroyed the impossible. You know, there's no such thing as impossible. There's, there's, there's so much that can be done in this world, you know. Uh, and I'm here to just do my part, you know, and worry over my part and strive to do the best that I can while I'm here and leave positive impacts on people and communities and my family as well. Agreed, man. I, uh, I think it's so important, like, as I've been digging deeper into um, my journey in life and things like that, and like, like auditing myself, I uh, realized I had to like remove the word why out of like whenever I uh, was questioning things. Because whenever I, I used the word why, it was kind of like me falling into like a pity party sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to replace that with uh, what. And what changed my thinking in regards to like taking action? Like what can I do? What should I do? And my mind thinking about like how do I get out of any situation that I'm in? Man? That's important. And so, once you trigger your but, mind like that, I know ideas come to you. Exactly. Once you change that, then you start calculating immediately right it may not come as frequently but if you continue to have that what then the calculation gonna be quicker you know what i mean it may one you may get one one idea because you just started that but something's gonna come definitely building building up that uh mental muscle man um speaking of mental so how do you approach uh mental health and uh self-care when you're facing adversity for yourself uh or just in your life how do you approach it when I'm first in the first, it's, it's good to have people around you that care, genuinely love you. You know, uh, it could be your, your, your children. It could be your spouse. It could be your friends. You know, you, you want somebody that can find and is pushing you, telling you so it's going to be OK, because you need to hear that, too. Right. <laughs> you know, so we kind of see the ones advocating. It's going to be all right. Just keep going. Keep moving. But who's telling me that? You know what I mean? It's we. I get down too. I'm in the office sometimes, and I I feel like crying. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. So we need that as well. You know, and it could come from all forms. You know, uh, of of uh, environments and situations, depending on where you at in your life right now. But you know, keep going, man. You know, don't quit. You know, um, there we we was taught that uh, there's no and as a scientist when you when you think as a scientist. In a laboratory, there's no such thing as a failure. It just proves that it can't be done that way. You know, so if I go through something, I'm like, oh, wow. I, 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 you, you would call it a failure, but I say, oh, wow, I can't go that way no more. Now, I know I tried that. I bumped my head. Now I know I'm not going there. So I'm smart enough today to realize that, hey, I got to go this way or try this way because I know that way does not work. So this is right. where I'm at in my journey, you know, and. You got to try something different, man. If, if that life that you're living is not serving you, it's OK to change. We have that ability to make a U-turn immediately. You don't have to be stuck in a bad situation. You don't have to be stuck in a bad environment. You don't you can make changes to get yourself out. That's the power of uh, human beings. We have the will to change. If things ain't going right, I can stop that right this second to say i'm not i no longer ascribe to that ascribe to that way of thinking or that way of moving i'm trying a new uh a way and of course they're gonna say oh you was always doing okay yeah i always did it but today is something new right. and if you're going to be a part of that then you can ride with this new if not you know you know 
kick rocks. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I wanted to jump into this, bro. If you could, man, um, tell me more about prominent insurance. So <clears throat> we've seen uh, prominent insurance is an independent property and casualty agency where we do uh, insurance, auto, home, business, life. So we cover uh, all aspects of insurance. So we be able to help you with your personal auto, your home, your renters, anything dealing with insurance. We have the capacity to write it with our uh, list of companies that we do have, um, Fortune 500 companies. And getting into business, like I said, I get in the business. I just, you know, when we first, when I first got into it, I, I just seen the money aspect of it, you know. Um, and then when you get in into it, you're like, wow, we have an awesome opportunity to make people whole in event of a loss. Mm -hmm. So I have to I have to be educated because in our community, we don't have advisors. We have order takers. That's mm -hmm. why our community do not ascribe to insurance. They think it's a racket. Why? Because every time they go get a policy. They're getting the instructions from someone they're trying to do business with. So, for example, um, I want to lease this office I'm in. The office is going to tell me, hey, in order to lease this office, this is your insurance requirements. But they're giving me the insurance requirements to cover themselves, not me. The insurance agent don't know my exposures. And then I go to my community, insur local insurance agents, and I say, hey. This is what I need. Instead of them asking me questions and figuring out my risk and what do I need, what my business is about, they write me a policy on that instructions that I gave them from my landlord. And in the event of a claim, the only person that gets paid is a landlord. So I'm like, what was I paying for? My insurance right. is covered. And it's always happening like that to us. So, you know, what we're doing, our mission at Prominent is to promote financial awareness and inclusion by educating clients on the value of insurance offerings and fostering minority rep representation within our industry. You know, as a minority owned and operated organization, we're committed to creating world class risk advisors who excel in servicing and educating unrepresented markets. You know, we believe in the power of ownership as well. So we're offering franchise opportunities to extend the reach and impact. So this is what we're doing. That's our mission statement. We're trying to service the undeserved markets that is being overlooked and not properly handled properly, which is a gold mine, by the way. You know, it's a gold mine. Um, and and, it, and it's 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 a process of educating our people on proper insurances because we still have the mentality I want the I want the cheapest. And we always we all we always know cheapest is not always the best. You know, we've right. been in situations where we purchased something that was cheap and we regretted it. So we want to educate them on their vulnerability. So this is what we do for our community and we offer an ownership and we offer franchise opportunities to, you know, increase that impact on our community as well. Reach an impact. So this is what we are doing. So, you know, uh, it was born in 2010. We just started franchising in 2023. Um, and, you know, it's a marathon. We're looking, you know, to grow and get advisors to be able to, you know, help our people understand the importance of financial education and properly insuring themselves. What, what I think is dope is um, you guys are saying the key piece right there is educating people. I think uh, as as I think about the word insurance, it's so much small, small prints that we just ignore because we don't want to read that. And most times when people are getting insurance nowadays, it's over the phone. So no one is not going to read that to you. And then when I send you over a 20 page, 50 page, 100 page packet, they know that nobody's not reading that stuff. So I love the fact that you guys are uh, educating people, which is, I think, is the key piece. So people understand, like, what they're signing, what they're getting into. I, I wanted to uh, also touch on this, though, in regards to, like, the insurance space. So growing up, the only insurance that I know about was car insurance, life insurance, my house insurance, and that's it. I didn't know about any other insurance that, that existed until I became an adult. And I learned a whole lot more around um, lots of uh, different types of insurances. 
So if you can, man, can you talk about like some of the insurance that is out there that some people may not even know about that actually exists? So you just named it. You just named the key components, the foundations that everybody should have. You know, of course, you should have your home insurance because the general liability and that that's a whole other situation. It's so many benefits to having a general liability policy. So you mentioned auto, you mentioned home and you mentioned life. If you have those key key insurance uh, pillars, you're in a great space. You know, uh, but when it comes to business, you have business income. When it comes to, you know, business, you have, uh, you know, uh, you have when it comes to your life, you have disability or long-term care insurance. So there's so much, that's why it's good to sit down with an advisor, you know, that can look over you. Cause what insurance typically does is this, the main thing is just to protect your assets as you grow your portfolio. Right. When you're growing your business, right? And you're trying to stop people from taking your liquid or what, or that which you created. So you get insurance. And insurance is just a bucket of money to say, hey, if my client does any of these covered perils, I'm going to, instead of you going to get his money, here's the bucket. And sometimes we're underinsured. You know, most times we're underinsured. I've never seen, it's rare that you're overinsured, you know, um, but most times in our community, we're underinsured. So we don't have the adequate insurance to be able to make us whole in event of the claim. Mm -hmm. you know, I know people that's operating house paid off and they don't want to get insurance on their home. It's crazy to me, but I'm like, wow, you're not going to protect the $300,000 $300, home or $150,000 home for $1,500 a year. I, it's, you know, So these are the things we have to educate them. Why is it important to be able to do that? Because, you know, this is why. But do you have forty thousand dollars for a claim? Do you have, if your water backups, twenty five thousand to get that out? No, if you don't, then this is the reason you you should have insurance. But if you do, then you may can self insure some of those exposures because there's other risk mitigate you know risk mitigation uh, options for you as well if you wanted to be able to use those also. So, okay. you know, this is what we do uh, here, but there's so many different insurances, but we deal with the main key components, as you mentioned, auto, home, life, renters, business insurance, uh, general, uh, anything dealing with the business as well. Got you. So you, you mentioned towards the end that um, it's a gold mine opportunity. So if you can talk about um, that opportunity that you just spoke about, I believe it's around franchising, but if you can speak around that and um, some of the benefits of that. So our mission at Prominent, as I just alluded to, uh, um, is, you know, to bring financial awareness to our community, to the undeserved, un, excuse me, undeserved, unrepresented markets, okay. which is the black and brown community, mm -hmm. unrepresented markets. And we have to be able to create uh, people to be able to speak that message and help them. So we create a franchise opportunity to not only um, get to the unrepresented markets, but to increase minority participation in this industry. Mm -hmm. The insurance and financial service industry is not represented at all as far as diversity. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 I can keep going with very, 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 very little representation of black and brown people in this industry. So this is where we came up with the franchise idea. And as you know, from having prior franchises, you know, you we have a, a you know, criteria. You, you got to have this much liquid, right. this much, you know, money to be able to operate. And it's a franchise fee. So we understand that because there's a lot of people in our community that have money that want a different career, want a different opportunity, want something that's residual, want something that they don't have to do for the rest of their life, build up a book of business that they can live off of. So we have that for them. But we also know that our community doesn't have a lot of money. Right. Most people can't uh, find a thousand dollars in event of a claim or event of a, a hardship. Right. So we know we have another opportunity, which is called path to partnership, where it doesn't cost you anything to join, anything to be a part of the prominent brand. We'll still train you. We'll still teach you. We still want to get you to where you got to go. But it's the path to partnership. So the commission structure is low, of course, because the franchise, you get a high commission structure. Right. But the path of partnership gives you the ability to come in with no cost. And every year you with us, 
you get 10% off your franchise fee. And as you build in your book of business while you with us, generating your income to be able to purchase your franchise, save up for your own prominent franchise, you know, Every client that you did when you had the money to save up for you, they all go with you to your franchise. So we created right. that path to partnership where there's no barrier to entry. You know, the barrier to entry is just the opportunity that you that we give you for you to run with. So we have the franchise model and the path to partnership model, which gives our people access to this industry with the platform, the professional training. And everything that they need to uh, to strive in this industry, and what makes us unique, is that when we get a franchisee or we get a path to partnership uh, client, what happens at that time? Only we have dedicated assistants, see uh, clients that they they have that they only gotta concentrate on revenue generating activity. So we handle the back office for them. So while they're building their business, we'll we'll handle the, the certificates, you know, we'll do the quote for them. You know, they front facing. I mean, you know, the franchisee or the path to partner is going to be the front facing dealing with the client. But if they need the ID card, they need us to uh, send over something to the client. We handle all that so they don't have to be bogged down with the administrative stuff in the beginning while they're building their business to be able to hire somebody full time. So we provide that support for all our franchisees as well. Nice. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, man. Um, for our listeners, if you guys are interested, um, Jason's going to drop us information if you guys want to work with him in regards to this um, franchise opportunity. So, Jason, I wanted to talk um, particularly about uh, a couple more insurance questions here from a, from a uh, personal um, aspect for people with personal and uh, life insurance. So if you can, can you give us the breakdown of uh, term life insurance and whole life insurance? Uh, what are the difference with those two? So um, term life and whole life, um, two aspects of a life insurance policy that everybody should have. You know, that's a dis you know, everybody should have life insurance. If you don't have millions of dollars in cash at your disposal, you need a life insurance policy. Um, so the difference in term and whole, there's multiple other ones as well, but those are the two main ones. Term is just like you're renting, you know, you're renting your home. Uh, um, it's temporary. You don't know when you're going to move. You know, you may be there for five, 10, 20 years, but you know, you're going to move at some particular time. Uh, so that's the term policy. Term can go up. We have policies, 10, 20 and 30 year terms. And of course, term is just a death benefit. So there's no cash value associated with it. You just get a pure death benefit um, with the term policies. And term, of course, is going to be the lowest cost option of the two we just uh, discussed, whether it be whole or life, because term, less than 1% of the population gets paid out on a term policy. You know, that's why the premiums could be so low. But if right. something was to happen, you had that death benefit whole life they know they're going to be they know they're going to have to pay out this policy as long as the you know the insured keeps paying its premium so they got to make sure that you know they're doing everything that's necessary to be able to pay it out 40 to 50 years so when you're dealing with life insurance in particular you never want to have that mentality if i need the cheapest why? Because you need your insurance companies to make an underwriting profit. Why? You want to get paid out 40 to 50 years from now. You don't want to be, you know, you, and you want a company that's been around for a long time. You know, you got these new companies that pop up, you know, oh, I got that. I got a life insurance policy for $20 a month. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Hopefully they're around 40 years from now when you need to cash in on that $20 a month policy. You know, so it's very, uh, you want to um, speak to an advisor. You know, um, and determine what's best fit for you. But I suggest that everyone listening to this podcast get you a life insurance policy. And the benefits about life insurance policies today, these new policies come with living benefits. So you don't have to die to use them, meaning that they got critical injury, chronic in chronic illness, terminal illness. You know, they got so many different riders that in the event that you get disabled, a heart attack, a stroke. You can borrow from your life insurance policy. 
You know, you could get from your death benefit. They give you a portion of your death benefit. That's unheard of. And um, and you don't have to die to use it, like I said. And most people, when they do die, first they get sick first. And they live with sicknesses for long periods of time. Not too many people just die unless it's an accident or something happened. But most people get sick with a with an illness and they live years at a time. And they and they may die longer than somebody that never had an illness. Right. So if you get sick with one of those uh you know, things that we uh, mentioned, then you can get from your death benefit, you know, and be able to uh, open up a business or put your children through college or do whatever you desire while you was living and be able to see your visions through, you know, um, to know that, you know, something was to happen to you, you did all that you was able to do while you was here. I like that, man. You actually answered my next question. I wanted to talk about, um, about uh, some, I've, I've seen people, look into insurance where like it carried a cash value or they could pull from it in case of a, a illness. Um, if you can touch on a little bit, man, how soon should someone get insurance? And I'm speaking in regards to like for their kids um, at a, at a very young age. Uh, like I said, life insurance is a, a depending on your strategy, depending on your personal situation. Where you at with cash flow? If I, I, I mean, life insurance is a legacy product. You know, meaning uh, everybody should have it. You know, if you have the ability to get it on your child, it's good to get it. You know, nobody is. I don't. I don't know. If you know the exp expiration date of anybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? You may say, "Hey, I don't need that." You know, uh, um, for for my baby just was born. I don't. Do you know that your your, your child's expiration date? If you do, good for you. You know, if you don't, I would secure that unless you're in a position to be able to do what you can financially for that child. Same situation, you know. So uh, um, having insurance, like I said, the key concept to having insurance, it protects your your money, protects your profit, protects your well-being, protects you in the event that somebody's trying to come after you civilly, trying to sue you or, you know, of that nature. So it's. Um, Everybody's situation. That's why I said, you know, speak to an advisor. They would advise you after looking at your situation whether, you know, they give you a recommendation, a proper one. Come to see prominent. We'll definitely give you a, a great recommendation, you know, uh, on um, whatever you, you know, you're going through. We'll look at your situation and give you our recommendations. So I seen something and I said I had to do this myself. And it's, it's around insurance. So I'm not sure if you've seen this yourself or you, I'm pretty sure you have, but I'm a, I'm a big movie uh, buff and I'm, I love the TV show Power uh, with Ghost. So um, yeah. when Ghost passed away, he uh, put his life insurance inside of his trust and it had a payout oh, wow. and things like that. So when I realized what he did was he put rules around inside of his trust and how his insurance should be paid out. But what he did was he left his family to be rich because what he did was like, let's say he had a million dollar policy, right? It didn't go out. It didn't get spent or just or fought for like with family members and all these other things or whatever. He said with this million dollar policy, I want it to be shared to my family a hundred thousand dollars a year so they could stay at a certain level that he left them at when he passed away, because he knew that if he would have to die and not put it inside of a trust, they would have taken a million dollars and spent it like in a week. You know what I'm Definitely. saying? So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that concept in regards to like life insurance and what people could, the, the power that you could use a trust and a life insurance together. But if you can speak a little bit to that, if you know about it. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Of course, you know, all you know, all life insurance, you could put life insurance in trust, you could put your personal auto insurance in the trust. But mm -hmm. it's the, you don't need a trust to per, uh, particularly to do the strategy that you said. You can give your life insurance company instructions. Okay. You know, prior to, hey, on this on this two million dollar payout, I would like uh fifty thousand or a hundred thousand to be paid over to my siblings, the beneficiaries on my account in increments of 50,000 per year, mm -hmm. you know, you can put something like that together and they will, you know, uh, 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 you know, approve your request. 
Gotcha. So okay. that's something that you can do. You can design it. There's strategies you can design it, you know, uh, um, however you desire. And then what a lot of investors is doing, like yourself, with life insurance, we have products where you you, you may have heard of it, uh, banking on yourself, infinite banking strategies where, right. you know, they're dumping, they're dumping because life insurance is not an investment. You know, whoever tells you life insurance is an investment, um, you know, they can get in trouble for that. So life insurance is not an investment. It's just a place, you know, they are using it as a place to store money. So people's putting tons of money in and getting 70 cents on each dollar that they put into a policy. Because, you know, life insurance policies and life insurance was created before the tax code, you know, and there's a lot of benefits that you get from having a life insurance policy. It could be exempt from financial aid. If somebody was I know I know people that had millions of dollars in a life insurance policy and, and, and was sued and they couldn't touch the millions of dollars in cash value that they had access to. Mm-hmm. But it was it's in a life insurance policy. So it's like, hey, if you suing me personally, yeah, I got a, I got a hundred million in my life insurance policy. I got access to the money technically, but that's not for me. That's for my beneficiary. Mm. So there's there's rules and regulations that keep people from going after that. In certain states, you can't even touch that. You know, depending on where you at in the union, you know, um, you can't even touch that. I could be sued and 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 I could file bankruptcy, but have access to twenty million dollars in life insurance policy. They can't. They can't do anything. So, but yeah, so that's a life. Uh, that's that's off the table. What does he have that you can go on Wells Fargo, PNC? What does he have there? Oh, Your Honor, he doesn't have anything there. He don't have no money there. It's nothing right. he could do. You know, what I mean, you could put it on his judgment. You can put a judge. You can, he can owe you. I mean, what you're gonna do? You know, he put a big judgment. But these are the things that life insurance and insurances can do to help you while you're building your wealth or maintaining your wealth in the process. Absolutely. If you can, man, um, you have already touched on it. So can you speak of what is infinite banking and the importance of infinite banking? So it's just another strategy in the life insurance. There's so many different strategies, but that's the main one. We've been doing it for six, seven years now. I got put onto it by being in the industry. It's a great industry. A uh, great strategy because it allows you to start building your bank, like a, a financial institution. But it's 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 a long play. It's a legacy right. play, like life insurance. Is. So there's a policy where we can get, like I said, there's you know we design a policy where we can get seventy cents on each dollar the first year. Mm-hmm. You know, with a whole life policy or uh, how people use, you know, um, what they use the index IULs right now for the strategy as well. But most whole life policy, if you go see a regular uh, uh, agent, you won't gain no cash value into the fifth, sixth year. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be 70 cents on a dollar. You understand know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we designed a policy where we lower the death benefit and give you the maximum cash value in the policy. So it's a cash play. Whereas, you know, people, investors is paying bills from it uh, and then paying it back, building up their portfolio because, you know, a life insurance, and then we do it with mutual companies as well because mutuals give a, a benefit a, you know a dividend and they've been given interest about four and a half five percent year after year uh through all types of economic climates and economic downturns and upturns they've been able to uh stay diligent um and be able to uh, give that return year after year but like i said it's not an investment but it's a place where you store capital great place and you could use that money to fund businesses do things of that nature uh, but it's a great strategy, and uh, we practice that here at Provident Insurance Service. Absolutely. Can you talk about the importance of having a will and having a um, power of attorney? Um, now, having a will and having a power of attorney. Now, I'm not a lawyer, uh, um, so I wouldn't be able to recommend you or give you recommendations on what the difference is. Mm-hmm. But I would recommend, you know, um, they they both. Uh, power of attorney, I know, is just somebody signing over. You giving them access to sign your documents, things of that nature, legal signage. And I know a will is if something you just what you want to act out. But to still, you know, you can have a will and don't have an estate plan and have this and have that. Still don't get no money. The courts take it off. So you want to definitely speak to somebody. 
you know, speak to us about that as well, because we have resources. We can sit you down with a state planner on our website. We have wills and trusts where you can go, you know, get you a will and do those things. So we have access and resources to make sure that, you know, we we tighten up your uh, your life on a financial uh, and insurance aspect of it. Nice. Yeah, I, I always um, have that conversation with some people that was uh, inquiring around a trust and it was talking about like the estate plan, which one like outweighs which one. So I always thought that it was important for uh, people just to get the education and seeing which one is better for them when it comes to um, ultimately their uh, legacy. So yes, sir. as a uh, entrepreneur and a businessman, can you speak towards now uh, your goal setting for your business and uh, where you're trying to take your business? So like I said, uh, you know, um, our vision is to become a leading minority owned financial education organization, champion diversity and inclusion within the insurance industry, um, while empowering clients with knowledge, tailored solutions and exceptional service through our network of franchisees. So, you know, we're trying to build the agency for us um, in prominent insurance services. We're trying to give our people black and brown community, the minority um, population, uh, a way into this insurance space without compromising. You know, we, we definitely um, we definitely in it, uh, operate at a high capacity too. We have to train in the platforms and, you know, we're looking to get 15 to 20 new franchisees, you know, annually, you know, we, we cherry pick because we want people to be successful. Uh, we really want to make sure it's a great fit for you and both our, our agency because um, we want everybody to thrive. And then you do know with franchise law, you have to list all the ones that didn't make it and they did make it, right. you know, uh, um, and they, they want to see that. Hey, how many people left the system? So we know when we, when we, we, we really want to be uh, uh, strategic in our growth. You know, uh, I, we understand it's a marathon. And on that marathon, you know, the road gets lonely, you know, when you when you when you are operating. But, you know, we stick into it and uh, we're going to be successful. So, you know, they can you know, if you if you're looking for an opportunity, we're, we're, we're the place for you. You can go online and to find out more information about us at www.prominentagency.com. Click on franchise opportunities. Um, and also, if you want to learn about the industry, how to thrive and, you know, strive and owning a property and casualty insurance, I just, uh, I actually just, uh, put out an ebook yesterday. Mm -hmm. I finished it up. I got the ebook out on Amazon as well, you know, to learn about, Hey, how to start your property and casualty insurance agency is only $19.99 ebook, you know, uh, and you'll be able to learn about this business. This is a very rewarding business. Uh, very good business, you know, millions is made in this business. Um, uh, so much to say about the business, you know, uh, that I, I, um, I like about it. So how do you, how do you stay up to date with, um, current trends and educate yourself as the insurance industry is a always evolving business in regards to like rules and regulations and things like that? Yeah, believe it or not, insurance really doesn't change too much because insurance is contracts. And there's organizations like ISO and AAIS, you know, that, that writes the policy forms. I and see. you have some companies that write their own policy forms, but they borrow from the standard. So they mm. tweak a few words. So, so as long as you understand the contracts and the particulars and how to assess risk, you know, you'll be fine. You'll see a lot of insure tech companies coming out that's making the user experience much more better than it was in the past. So they're making, hey, you can get a policy, you can get a life policy right online. All we need is your date of birth and your name, and we have a policy to you. So they're making the user experience a little bit better, but the the the, the contracts and the forms that they're using is old forms that've been around, you know, been a, that's 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 being operated. But they're just making how you purchase the product a little bit uh, much more efficient. Um, but insurance is an old industry, as I alluded to. You know, it was here before the tax code. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you know, we we know about insurance being from the slave trade. You know, right. uh, we was it says it in it says it in our uh, in the Bible. You know, they they traded even on to men. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they they you know they wanted to insure their cargo. We 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 had a big a uh, 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 play in that as well. You know, that's where it all started. Hey, I want to get you know, and then there's books out there too to talk about it, but. Um, we're going to do our part. We're going to revolutionize the industry and we're going to make it fit for us because our goal is to create the, the agency force and then also become an insurance carrier where we actually writing and underwriting the risk for particular market segments or for particular clientele base that we desire is being unrepresented. So a lot of companies is trying to do that as well right now. Not a lot of companies. One company is trying to do that right now, you know, um, in the auto space. Absolutely. If you can, man, can you uh, tell us? I'm thinking about your story and and to the level that you got to now and how you 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 guys are making it a point to give back to the community. So how important was your childhood upbringing fueling what you do now to make sure like people coming from where you came from, see this side of a uh, success? Man, it has everything to do with it, man. I, I experienced, I experienced a lot, you know, lack of opportunity, lack of exposure, uh, that we're trying to bring. So, you know, we speak at schools, we're doing a HBCU tour, HSBCU tour. You know, we plan on these marketing things right now so we can get access to our, you know, uh, the people that we're trying to introduce this, this model to. So these are the things, uh, uh, but my upbringing, man, it, it, it gave me the, re uh, the resiliency to be able to, uh, endure hardships mm -hmm. endure hard times not too many people can endure hard times you know we designed like if you come from where we come from man if i if i was the if i was to um you know you know have nothing today i'm not gonna kill myself mm -hmm. i'm gonna just have nothing today but tomorrow i'm gonna figure out how do i put something in my pocket Right. I've been here before. It's not like I understand, you know, eating uh, oodles and noodles, Raymond noodles, which they call them. You know, I understand not having to eat at all. You know what I'm saying? And then we still played, we still smiled, and we still did things and we didn't die. So right. if I don't have it today, I'm not going to kill myself over money. You know, that's not what I'm tied to. You know, uh, I know I have the ability to change. I know that if I do the things that I'm supposed to do, my situation is going to get better, but it may not get better tomorrow or the next day, but I know it's going to get better because I'm doing the things necessary for change. So, um, you know, tough times, like, like, you know, tough times don't last, tough people do, you know, so. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. I uh, want you to talk about, man, um, leadership. I uh, could see and hear your tonality when it comes to uh, leadership as a business person and, um, you know, carrying that torch in regards to like trying to help people. Can you talk a little bit and share with our, our listeners how important is leadership for you as it is uh, personally and as a business person, bro? Yeah, leadership is very important. That's a key pillar to grow. You know, you have to properly find the proper leadership first. So you can have the right guidance because leadership comes in all shapes, songs, shapes and forms. So you got to you got to be able to recognize what a leader is or what type of leader can lead you or where do you want to go? You know, and then find leaders in that particular field. You know, if it's spiritual, what what moves you? You know, who's doing the things that is bringing uh, that you see? may achieve because everything you see is 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 not what it is you know so you gotta have discernment as well um but leadership qualities you know we was taught the greatest lesson in leadership is be the example that you desire to see be the example that you want to see 
that's the so I strive to do that. You know, I, I want to be that example that I want to see. Because if I can be that example that I want to see, and I'm spreading, you know, the gospel, I'm spreading righteousness. And if you doing the same, then our environment is going to pe- be peaceful. Our environment is going to be conducive to that which is in our mind, because slums exist in the minds of the people. Mm-hmm. You know, you could take a whole community from the projects, put them in Beverly Hills, and Beverly Hills going to look like the projects. But if you take the people from high civil, uh, high society, you take people that live in high society, learn how to live clean, learn the ethics and move them to the projects, then the project is going to start emulating what's in the people's high society mind. So the grass is going to start being greener. You know, people is not going to be pissing in the elevators no more. There's going to be garbage cans around. The, 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 the streets is going to be well lit. You know, right. people is going to start taking responsibility. There's going to be more cop calling. There's going to be more people standing up saying you can't do that here, you know, risking their lives. You know, when you go to a neighborhood, you see an old lady come out and say, no, no, you can't do that here. <laughs> you can't. Uh-uh. You're like, uh-uh. You know, go over and go back. They'll tell you, go back over there with that. You know what I'm saying? You right, can't right, do that right, here. right, right. But that's what happens when you have the right mindset and the right leadership. You know what and what not to do. And you can start to make your environment conducive to what's in your mind. Because what you see in the minds of men and women is out in the world. Yeah. These computers, we're we're looking, we're we're operating on Zoom. It was in somebody's mind. We're operating over a computer. It was in somebody's mind. So the things that we bring out, the things that you see it externally comes from what's in us internally. So if we change what's in us internally. You know, the outside will constantly change because this is what we bring in. This is what, you know, uh, um, as the as the scripture says, first it was the word and then the word became flesh. True. You know, so first is a thought. Now I got to bring that thought into fruition. And what does it look like? So that's why our communities. You know, I was saying that the other day, you know, I said, uh. Uh, you know, you go to clean communities. If you was to drop stuff in a in a high society community, they're gonna clean that up. You it won't be there tomorrow. No, but if you go to right. the hood, and, you go to the hood and drop some, you'll see that same piece of garbage there for months and months <laughs> and months. <laughs> Nobody, and then everybody's walking past it. Like you feel what I'm saying? And you can yeah. do that experiment. Go to a clean area. You want to do that experiment? Go to a clean area. Just throw some garbage down. I bet you won't. You go three days later, you won't see it there. You go to it. Uh, 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 what they call a ghetto area. You throw that garbage down. Don't visit that ghetto area again to next year. Mm-hmm. You want to see that 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 thing right there where you left it. You know, and that's uh, because the mentality, what's in their minds, is being expressed. You know, it's and it's a con- and it's a conditioned mindset, and it's 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 so sad that we could program ourselves. Um, to and subject ourselves to either one of these um, causes. Um, the beautiful thing about that, though, is that we can reprogram our minds too. You know what I mean? And uh, fix all these situations. Yes, sir. That's the key. We spoke about that earlier. We have the will to change. It's okay. We have the will. You have. You can say no. I no longer ascribe to that way of thinking. That's right. I ascribe to this new way of thinking. When did you start that? Because, you know, our community won't let that. I'm telling you, it's something about, you know, you being they won't let they won't let that bad thought of you leave. They were like, hey, when did you start this? Why are you thinking like that now? Oh, you wasn't doing that yesterday. Oh, today you want to they they want you to be stuck there. You know what I'm saying? They'll hold you to the fire. You know what I'm saying? But you're like, no, this is me. This is new me today. I'm going to practice this every day going forward. It's not going to be easy. You know what I mean? Because I, I I know I've been living in that long way for a long period of time, but every day I'm a dupe. How I would how I would have approached that situation, I'm going to approach that situation when it's presented to me differently. Yeah, man, I had to take that approach um, a while back in my life. Um, based off, you know, you know my story. I had to like change my circle, and it's interesting you saying that now, but. I was with someone else and um, they recently had that uh, revelation where they're around 
a bunch of uh, other people. And uh, I don't know if I was rubbing off on this person, but they say once they got into that other space, they realized that um, I don't belong here no more. Like this, yeah. ain't, this ain't my circle no more. This ain't my, I've outgrown these people based on how they think, how they act, what they do. And uh, it was just interesting to like uh, gain that concept and like you were bringing, speaking about that now, man, it's interesting. Yes, sir. If, uh, if you can, man, I, uh, I see you on social media and I, I, I know you speak a lot about quite a few things, these things that I'm gonna ask you about as we get ready to wrap up here. So can you tell me how important has social media been for you in regards to sharing your message, talking about your business and just empowering people? Um, so social media is a very important tool. I haven't been using it to uh, its capacity. I don't, you know, it's a gift and a curse, you know, it could be distracting. Uh, so I try to, you know, right now my new mindset, because you change every day. <laughs> It's just that I got to, you know, it can be distracting, you know, what people post, depending on who you follow, the algorithms, man, they, they'll send right. you everything. So you got to be very careful of what avenues that you frequent, you know, um, starting to spend a lot of more time on LinkedIn. The content is different. The ideas is different. Mm -hmm. Gives you a different level of uh, education. Right. Um, but social media, Instagram, TikTok, all of these places is means to get to a particular audience that you desire to reach. So we are starting to wrap ramp that up. I, I have uh, a lot of followers, like hundreds of thousands. I mean, I got a lot of clients that have hundreds of thousands of followers. You know, um, I, I I haven't built it up to that point. I'm I'm just beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but social media is a good method to get your message across to in a vast audience you know so i i uh, it's it's a great tool and it should always be used you know just like anything is how are you using it you know i was at a conference i was at a conference and uh one of these black billionaires and he has a great initiative where he wants to uh get broadband to these deserts what they call desert communities mm -hmm. where everybody can have access to internet which is honorable but you're going to give access to internet to people that's going to be on a uh, demon time you understand what i'm saying <laughs> they, they're not even you know they, they you, they're not exposed to anything that's positive so when they get online they're they're doing you know how the algorithm is algorithm is yeah. our community yeah. they talked about it you know they they encourage stupidness over here where people is doing stupid stuff to get millions of views, but in other countries, their algorithms only uh, increase the usage on people that's doing rocket science or yeah. building, that that stuff, you do crazy stuff in other countries, you might not even get people to look at it because their algorithms is set up that it don't reach anywhere. So right. we have to train our people up to be able to use these devices for the greater good and that's educating themselves on something that's going to help them get out of their situation or make their situation better you know you see it today most women is on there naked you know it's it's sex i mean it's like it's like it's, it's like pornhub on instagram or social this is crazy out here you know what i'm saying so it's 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 detrimental in one sense and and, and uh it can be you know uh uh rewarding in another sense and i know people that don't even get on the internet you know certain spiritual people that i know they don't have nothing to do with the internet they don't you know what i mean because they know of they know what's being promoted on there and how easily somebody can be influenced and have a wrong idea enter their mind so a lot of people protect their thoughts and protect what comes in their mind whether they see it or they hear it so they say, hey, that's dangerous. I don't want to see anything that may, you know, hamper my ideas that I'm trying to start to build. But 100 percent, bro. So, you know. It it varies based off what platform um, you're using social media for. So I said, if I'm going to use social media, it's going to be for the good and it's going to be for my business. And to that point, to even like hire somebody to like do some of these things for me as I could see and learn what 
these companies use these algorithms for and stuff like that. And I would not say that they use it for your good. They use it for their good. You know what I mean? So I had to audit like what I was, who I was following and who was following me, man. So like, I think my following was up to like 3000 people. And I think it's down to like 200 people now, bro. Like I had to like, just like dump a whole bunch of things that was, that was in my feed. Like, and as soon as like, uh, you watch it or see it, like they take up on those algorithms of like, oh, he watched this for 10 seconds, five seconds, six yeah. seconds. And then like, just keep pouring those things into your face every single time. And so I had to like, make sure I like audit whatever I was uh, viewing or watching or what I was following at that time. And my wife was telling me this, um, and I did not know this, but my wife was telling me this, um, you said it, but she was much more specific. She said uh, in China on TikTok, they don't see no nonsense. They see no nonsense. They all, all they see is education stuff, scientific mm -hmm. stuff. Um, their kids is gonna learn and be so much ahead of uh, whoever else is watching these um, dance moves, these body parts, all these other things. Their, their kids is not gonna see that, man. I just thought that was so interesting. And as, I, as I'm saying that to you right now, well, the community that we uh, live in, we're getting ready to leave our community and uh, there's uh, kids at the bus stop. And uh, at the bus stop, there were kids that was going to private school. And who was going to private school? It was the Asian kids that was going to the private schools at our bus stop. And there's tons of schools around here in our community. But I noticed that the Asian kids were at the bus stop. And I just was like wondering, like, I could see how they make it an important point and stress education to their kids and that's why you see that demographic is either like your lawyers, your doctors and things like that in regards as they push a big emphasis on um, education. Um, but I also yep. thought it was another interesting point of, personally for me, you know, I, uh, I saw what you could kind of tell what is being taught in a household when you see what kids do and stuff like that. So at the bus stop, I seen the group of Caucasian kids, the group of Asian kids, and the group of black kids all separate. Now these are like five, six, seven, eight year old kids, but they were all in their own silo in their own group at the bus stop. And I was wondering like, none of these kids were interacting, none of them were playing, none of them were talking together. And that was just saying, that said a message to me. I don't know if you think the same thing too, you could disagree, but I was like, most kids, when you see them in school, they're gonna interact, they're gonna play, they're gonna, do a whole bunch of other things and stuff like that. And just to see 15 kids all separated at the bus stop in their own little group and all little silo, it was just like, what is being taught or what is being shared either in the household or what is being taught or shared at school? Yeah, you know you know what's being shared. You know, right. stay away from them black folks. They teach that, you know what I mean? Because when they come over here, the images of us, you got love and hip hop. You know, you got all of these derogatory images of black folks in America that um, when they come over, they like stay away from them people. They're no good, you know, because mm -hmm. um, it was the images that they're getting. You know, it's it's all designed. Those those we and, and and like you said, you know, the Chinese. If you got these, as your wife alluded to, if they're looking, if they're getting recognized for doing something that's using their brain, of course they're going to be at a higher echelon than our children growing up. You understand what I'm saying? Like in India, man, they all programmers and computer techs and the whole world is going to AI and all our children know how to do is use these gadgets. Right. Even, even in our community, when you look at the gurus, they wait until a product gets, okay, Web3 comes out or crypto. We don't have nothing to do with it. We're just waiting for somebody else to design it. And now we're the expertise in this particular field, but we're still consumers. We haven't created a product or anything that we're bringing as a whole to the space that's going to make our situation. We're always in a proactive state. Reactive, reactive, yeah. reactive. Like, okay, this came out. Okay, how do I navigate that? Oh, he made a new product. How do I navigate that? Oh, he made a new product. Oh, this is the best product. This is going to give us freedom. Listen, ain't no product out there going to give you freedom if you ain't created. You mm -hmm. got to have the service. You got to, you don't control the service. You don't control the lines. You don't control nothing like that. You, you don't have, it's, they be, I be listening to them sometimes. I'm like, okay, good luck, brother. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you. 
know what I'm saying? But you got to really understand that you we really have no power unless we're creating this to be able to benefit us for us. You know what I mean? Right. Like people. So, man, um, how important is your faith um, with all the things that you've uh, done in your life, man? Oh, man, it's the key. It's the key pillar. You know what I mean? Without faith, without my faith, man, I'd be dead. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I'm always, you know, I try to stay humble, you know. Um, see people in, you know, what I appear to be worse situations. I'm always, you know, I always say the scripture, man, if 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 not for God's grace, there go I, you know. Just try to understand that, man. That could be me. How can I, how, how can I help? You know, what can I do? What am I not doing? What the lack of? You know, there's a lot of work that we all have to do, you know. Um, and it's not gonna be done by me alone. It's not gonna be done by you alone. It's a it's a it's a concentrated effort of communities that's doing what's necessary to bring change over a period of time. You know, so we just gotta change that dynamic, you know, that that ideology that's out there, but it's very difficult when they're promoting everything that's against righteousness. If you look at the world today, man, it's totally opposite. It's not the same world that God envisioned. He'd come back here nowadays, wouldn't even know where he at. Like, what the <laughs> hell? The, where, what? You could do that? Yeah, it's okay. Oh, what? That's okay? Okay, I know. I, I don't belong here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but we got to, these are the things that, you know, we have to, you know, like I said, going back to that leadership quality, man. Just being the example that you desire to see, you know, you be that example that you desire to see. You bring change. First, it starts with you and your in your, your household. How is your children? Is your children the menace out there? You know, I, I teach my children to be respectful, you know, and treat others with respect, you know. And I and I and that's a big thing, you know. I, I start with mine. That's what I have control over. I don't have control over yours, but I'm gonna tell mine to love black people. Black blood and brown blood is sacred. You don't shed that. You know what I mean? You know, there is that's the last thing you ever do. You know, teach them the importance of life, teach them the importance of righteousness and doing the right things and how it pays off. You know, uh, 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 the, the, you know, you know, they, you know, um, the good guy doesn't finish last. The good guy does finish first. You know, I don't know where you get this from. You understand what I'm saying? The good guy does finish first. The, you know, the working person is a winner. You know, uh, uh, it's just so many different mentalities that's out there that's contrary to what God designed for us. It's just, it's just combating that, you know. Um, and social media don't make it easy right. because they, you know, they these kids got smartphones. I didn't have a phone at all when I was young. You know, you didn't either. <laughs> you know, these kids come out the room five, six and got smartphones. You know what I mean? Leave it right in front of that, you know. So there's a lot that we have to do, man. And you know, these, these platforms allow us to voice our message. These platforms like yourself, you bring about change with what you're doing, you know, just taking time out of your day to be able to do this, you know what I mean? Which fulfills your path, you know, your purpose, you know what I mean? And making change in the world. So that's honorable on your behalf as well. And whatever I got to do, my brother, you know, you got a, uh, you got an ally brother, you got a brother over here, you know, uh, um, that's with you, man. I, and I, I like what you're doing. You know, um, we just need to build on that. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Um, I have two more questions and we're going to get you out of here, man. I know you got a busy day, man. Um, if at the end of the day, bro, uh, how important the life that Jason is uh, leading now, how's, how important is that to your family and to you, towards your legacy, bro? Man, it's the, the, the life that I'm leading now is very important because I'm the example for my children to actually see. You know, I always tell them, you know, I was one, my mother gave me great advice. If I listen to my mother's advice, I'd probably be a hundred, I'd probably be 10 times, not a, a 10 times, a hundred times better. But sometimes, you know, they're not examples of the advice they give, which is difficult. And I was a person that, uh, I was I was hard headed, meaning that they say a wise person learns from the mistake of others, and a fool learns from his own. I was a fool, you know what I mean. So I'm starting to become a wise person where I can learn from others, because all the other times when I see them do it, I said, "Then they touched that." I see it burnt their arm off, but it didn't really like it. It didn't really like it hurt it. 
Let me try that. Like, what the? Are you crazy? Like, you don't see that. So, you know, just being the example in my household is what the key is. It's life is simple, man. It's not rocket science. We make it complicated, man. Just, just be that person. You don't want your child to smoke. Don't smoke. Don't say smoking. Smoking is bad for you, son. <laughs> you shouldn't do this when you. He's just curious. Or drinking is bad for you, son. You shouldn't do this. Or whatever you do, fornicating is bad for you, son. You should have a wife. You know what I mean? These are the things. We have to be examples of that which we want to see. And if you be that, you make a better house. You make a better wife. You make a better husband. You make a better community member. You make a better person to those that you do meet and, you know, you encounter. Absolutely. Bro, so you came from New York. Had a challenging upbringing, had an incident, and you decided to uh, dig deeper in your faith, dig deeper into your purpose, and lead a life of uh, transformation. If you can, man, can you leave us with uh, some wisdom, some life lessons that you can share with our audience, bro? Yeah, wisdom, you know, uh, um, stay righteous. You know, they got, they got, they got, uh, words out here now stay dangerous <laughs> stay there stay there like we're getting crazy just stay righteous you know do the right thing you know what the right thing is you know you 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 know hopefully you still have that man that you talk to that i talk to that's there telling you hey you know you should be doing that listen to him you know um follow the right rules and regulations respect you know the laws and authorities uh, as long as it don't conflict with, with god's laws respect your rules and regulations of the land as long as it does not conflict with God laws, you know, who would you follow? I know I'm gonna follow God laws before I respect any law of the land. Um, so just 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 do that, man. You know, uh do what's right, you know what's right, and and and, and be righteous and be the example that you desire to, you know, you desire to see. Absolutely, thank you for that, man. So, bro, uh before we get up out of here, man, um, you gave us so much knowledge and wisdom in regards to like your life. And then you gave us so much knowledge in regards to uh, the business industry that you're in now. Um, if anybody wanted to uh, contact you to work with you, to book you for something, or if somebody wanted to um, get more information about the in, uh, insurance industry and um, get an insurance policy from you or something like that, how could they reach you and contact you? So uh, you could reach me on you could reach me online at www prominentagency.com. All of our information is there. Um, you can hit, I uh, know uh, Michael, uh, he, my Instagram handle, prominent underscore J with two Y's. You can hit me there. We're here for you. You know, uh, um, look at us online. That's the best way, prominentagency.com or on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is Jason Rodriguez. I'm easy to uh, find, you know. I'm not, I'm not running from nobody as of yet, you know. Now I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but today you can find me. <laughs> it's change, things change. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta adapt. <laughs> yes, sir. But today I can be found. All right, man. Hey, man. So uh, thank you so much, here, bro, for uh, coming on on the stage and sharing your story and sharing. Uh, all of these are important things that uh, affected your life, but totally made a complete change, man. And just uh, empowering people and inspiring people and making an impact in people's lives. Um, Jason, thank you so much, bro. Um, if you got any other parting words before we get out of here? Uh, man, I, I just want to thank you and what you're doing and um, for, you know, allowing me on your platform, you know, taking your time out of your day as well. To be doing this man it's this honorable thing man and keep doing it you know uh, i see this 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 uh fills that fire in your heart you know i see it you know <laughs> appreciate it man thank you man yes, hey guys sir, uh, sir. we drop episodes weekly for my friend uh, jason rodriguez i'm your host michael allison until next time peace we love you peace can't complain at all couple dollars in my pocket no income and go been working on my body, getting healthier Thank God for clarity